Welcome back to another video everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, there's a reason that the aspect ratio of this video is the way it is. Um, that video has already, already been up anyway. The reason we have the video this way is because there are going to be numerous photos and numerous uh, screenshots shown for the rest of the video and they need to be that way. So that's that. So, just going to use these numerous videos for now for the background while I talk and introduce everybody to what the video is going to be about so that you know what to look for. Uh, basically, before I go back up to St Michael's and do some more filming uh, near Marsh Farm and the fishery and stuff like that, just wanted to show some uh, everybody this, well, numerous, nu numerous things, let's say. So, the first thing I'm going to show you guys will be the tunnel. We've seen the tunnel already. We're going to have another look at the tunnel and then I'm going to show you on the actual map where that is and how easy it would have been for something to make its way from there down to where Nicola was found. The other thing I'm going to show you is where Marsh Farm is. Now remember, Marsh Farm is where Paul Anser was interviewed by Channel 5. It's where the red van was and it's also owned by Emma White. Emma White, the GoFundMe lady who wears the lashes on the camera. Uh, that's Emma. She owns that farm. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the map where the farm is, and and again how easy it would be to to let's say put something in the river at the farm location. And judging from my last video on the river, you guys saw how powerful and how fast the river flowed backwards when the tide was coming in. Right, so something could easily go in the river there at the right time of the day. It would make its way upstream. So, just something to think about. Those are the two things you're going to see first, okay? And then what we're going to do, we're going to move on to very, very, very interesting few facts about a few different people. You may or may not know. I don't think many of you will know this. Um, and then if anybody wants to join the dots up, they can. So stay tuned. Right, here we go then. Here's the tunnel. The tunnel goes underneath where I'm standing. That's in the farmer's field. That's St. Michael's in that direction, and that is the tunnel exit into the river. Again, I've showed you guys this on the previous video, but as you can see, there's handprints on there, footprints on there, and judging from the plant, it's been opened and closed fairly recently, right? Just something to think about. I've read a lot of, a lot of comments on the tunnel, so just something to think about, okay? Um, and now in a second, we're going to show you guys... Uh, on the map, the tunnel, where it is, and where it is compared to where she was found, and how easily something could be in there, uh, especially if the water's a little bit higher, which it was when she was found, just a few days before that the water was higher, remember, um, how easily something could just go through there and find its way to the river. So, here's the map, here's the tunnel here, and just downstream where she was found is there, right? Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, so moving on. Um, got another video in the background, obviously. Some beautiful uh, messages there to Nikki. Um, I think this was actually after she was found. So it was quite it's quite upsetting, to be fair, walking over the bridge, you know, uh, after that's happened. And you can see everybody's uh, genuine sort of respect and love and, and messages and stuff. It was uh, it's quite touching there. So here we have Marsh Farm. Marsh Farm is there. And something would flow upstream to there, right? Quite easily, I imagine, okay? With the upstream of the uh, tide coming in, easily doable. Just something something else to think about, guys, right? Uh, there's the weir. Again, the aspect ratio is pretty poor. Sorry about that. You'll see why now. We're going to be showing you guys some uh, some screenshots, which are going to be, in my opinion, very interesting and very debatable. And I've no doubt it will it will end up with hundreds and thousands of comments on it. Um, so, guys, take a look at this case here. Um, drug dealing case in Blackpool. Mark Ansel, right, by Lancashire Police. Uh, big investigation. Uh, so, moving on to the next page. Keep that in your mind. So, on to the next page. This investigation was called Operation Lawson. Paragraph near the bottom, yeah? Operation Lawson. 
Remember that name? Lawson, right? Now, which officer headed that investigation? Oh, look. DCI Rebecca Smith. Where's that name ring a bell? Oh, yeah. She was in charge of the Nick and Bully case, right? Right, who's, who's Mr Lawson? There he is. Andy Lawson. Now, you're probably wondering where the name fits in. Operation Lawson may be a coincidence, but Mr Andy Lawson is not a coincidence. So, Mr Andrew Lawson is a director from Essex. Where was Nicola originally from? Essex, right? He has two companies, one at number 28 and one at number 30 on the same road in Wickford, Essex. What companies are they, I wonder? They're estate agents. Hmm. And looking at the history of the companies, they're in debt, they're dissolved, and basically they're in, they're in pretty big trouble. Except Mr. Andy Lawson's photos are living the big life. Champagne, expensive champagne, expensive suits, parties. You get the picture. So I hope I'm painting a picture here. Right, here it is, the big one. A GoFundMe page for Paul and Sal's family. We messaged them to see who it was, and look who replies. Mr. Andy Lawson set up the GoFundMe. Now, you may think that's a nice thing to do. He's wrote on there that he's close friends with Paul, right? But the thing is, him or Nicola are not friends with him on Facebook. That's strange, isn't it? So, guys, uh, these are some of the companies that he was in control of, as you can see, and are in control of at the moment they are mortgage broker companies estate agents etc and most of them are not doing great or they went bust so these companies have the same address as the gofundme well one of the addresses is the same but there's a couple of addresses but they're like next to each other basically so just putting this information out there for people to think about it and put their opinion on it and have a think and look into it not speculating myself, obviously, um, just putting it out there. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to St. Michael's at some point, maybe tomorrow, we'll see, and we're going to look at Marsh Farm, we're going to look at the fishery next to it, we're going to look at the river around that area to just to check, uh, see what it looks like. If anybody did do anything there, I think it would be good to have a look at it. We haven't been down that far, and I think it will be it will be a good video. So... I hope some of this evidence I've brought up in the video is going to provoke people to think a little bit more. Um, can you put your ideas and what you think and any more information you have? Because a lot of that information actually came from somebody else and we've looked into it. So if anybody has any ideas or information or evidence, please drop a comment, etc, etc. Um, and we'll go from there. So again, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for their support recently. It's actually touched me uh, how much support I had with everything going on. I really appreciate that. It definitely motivates me to keep the videos going, to keep going up there, keep going to different places and trying to find these people, trying to find answers. Um, at the end of the day, this this whole thing, this video and all the other videos on Nicola are mostly for justice for Nicola. There are obviously other reasons for it. You know, yes, you're trying to build a channel up. Yes, you're trying to give coverage on the story so people can see, like a, like a news channel would. But in the heart, you know, a lady, tragically in this situation, has actually died. And we all know, well, we all think and we all see that it's not as innocent as the police are making out. And at the end of the day, we just don't want that case to be closed. And, you know, blatantly, there's more to it. There may not be. But it would be good to see the police overturn every stone and then come to that conclusion. Whereas at the moment, we've all got these ideas in our head of things that need to be looked at, myself included. And quite frankly, they're not being done. So the videos will still keep coming until that happens. Um, so hopefully we can bring justice for Nicola. Uh, if not, we can at least bring some answers and keep the police on the ball keep the police doing what they should be doing um i'm gonna end the video with something i found and if you google 
Lancashire Police. There are actually a ton of negative stuff about them and similar cases. So that just prompts me even more that we all need to keep doing what we're doing because there's a high chance they may be letting her down. You know, they may be doing their job. They may know exactly what they're doing, but we can't take that chance.